Hello and welcome to Just One More Watch. Or should that be Just Two More Watches? Yes, I've been a little bit naughty and I have picked up two new pieces to add to my personal collection. Though one of them was kind of free. I'll talk about that a little later on. Now, both of these watches have made something of a cameo appearance each on the channel in the past. Again, I'll explain myself as I go on. The first is the Stratton Special with the Valjoux 7750 chronograph. The second is the Seiko Presage Cocktail Time. Let's flip the camera and peel off some stickers. Oh, decisions, decisions. Which one do I unbox first? I think I'm going to go for the Stratton and come back for the Seiko. I have been itching for this package to arrive. I've been tracking it as it got to Sydney. Picked it up from the post office earlier on this morning. So, cameo appearance as mentioned. I actually did a showcase on these Stratton Specials three or four months ago. Kyle from Stratton sent me a bunch of them to look at. Stratton, definitely one of my top three micro brands that I've looked at in the channel in terms of the, the styling and in terms of the quality of the product as well. I had a chat with him. We came to a bit of an arrangement and he did me a deal on one of these. I could not resist. And which one did I go for? Of course, if you're going to go for a 70s watch, you go for the pumped up 70s one. No holds barred, all in brown on brown. I said at the time that I did the showcase that more people commented on the Stratton Special than any other watch that I had worn to work, and it's easy to see why. Big 1970s square kind of TV case, outrageous color scheme there with a the brown, the little orange flex, and this one has the legendary Valjoux 7750 movement. I really had to add a piece with one of those movements into my collection, and this is it, so let's get the stickers off. Now, I opted for the high polish finish. They do these in a bunch of different finishes. Most of them are sold out, I think. There's still a few available, though. DLC clear coat on this, so it'll stay looking good for ages. I really understand the kind of neo retro thing. You're buying a watch, brand spanking new. You get something that you can peel the stickers off yourself. You know that the movement is spot on, brand new, not going to need service for five years or so takes away a lot of the doubt that you would normally have when buying a vintage piece if you were to go back to the 70s and pick up a, a genuine original retro chrono. Look at that, the lovely kind of special logo there with the tachometer, the speedometer on the back of the watch. Let's get the time set and get it on wrist. Let's have a look at that dial first though, and isn't it a honey? You can see the purple AR coating on the glass, sapphire crystal glinting away. Screw down crown was pretty tight initially, but I guess another feature of these Strattons is 100 meters of water resistance. So, you know, they're over styled, over retro, but they also have a fair degree of practicality about them. I'll be looking forward to seeing how the loom has changed. The prototypes just had C1, this one should have C3. I'll maybe do a bit of a, a loom video while I'm talking about this one, but look at that dial. Lovely kind of smoky, copper-toned, sunburst brown. Those little perfect squares around, or what are they, kind of squircles, actually. I think that was a Fiat term from a few years ago in the Fiat Panda, a squircle. Look at those little squircles there, the subdials at the 12, the 6, and the 9. One push of the top pusher, starts the chrono ticking. One push to stop, one push to reset. I think this one could end up being a bit of a favourite. Now the Valjoux ones did sit a little higher on the wrist than the Mecha Quartz. They are quite thick. I think that's about 15, 16 mil thick when you take into account the Sapphire. But because they're square, the lug to lug is very short indeed. So still sits pretty nicely. Nice colour matching on the supplied leather strap there. It does come with a NATO, but I hear they're quite difficult to get on and off these. I've got no intention of taking this one off the leather strap. I think it suits it to a T. I must say this production unit really does look a lot more spectacular than the prototypes I looked at. It's the glass. That glass is fantastic. Bit of a dome on there, but all that AR means you get a really crystal clear view of the dial, but it just pops. It really does. Very nice with that DLC clear coat. I know what watch I'm wearing to work tonight. Stratton are working on a Laguerra Bullhead Chrono, and they've got another couple of pieces in the pipeline. I look forward to reviewing them for you in the future. 
All right, up next it's the Seiko. Now this isn't the first Seiko cocktail time that I have reviewed on the channel. It is also not the first Seiko cocktail time that I have owned. I had a brief flirtation, shall we say, a, a dalliance, a catch and release with an espresso martini one a couple of months back and I published the review of JP's SARB 065, the original, the granddaddy, the OG cocktail time last week. This, however, is neither of those. This is the SRPB43, so it's the updated blue dial cocktail time. Some would say inferior blue dial cocktail time, but let's have a look at it anyway. And there it is. Looks pretty good glinting away under the studio lights. So how on earth did I end up acquiring one of these? Well, I love a bargain. I know, right? That must have come as quite a shock to most of you. I hope you were sitting down when I uttered that sentence. Now, I'm a member of several Facebook groups, the Australian Affordable Watch Forum being one of them, and somebody tagged me on a post there saying that Qantas, the national carrier, the flying kangaroo, the local airline, had a deal on for their frequent flyers. Let me just peel this sticker off. That was harder than it should have been. They had a deal going whereby frequent flyer members, and I would imagine that encompasses about 10 million people, most of the adult population in the country are members of the Qantas Frequent Flyer Program. You could pick up one of these for 2,000 points, which is a notional amount of points, and a couple of hundred bucks. That's about half the price of the RRP. In fact, there should be a tag on here somewhere. Now there's no RRP, but there we are, SRPB43J1. It's the Japanese one, of course, it's the Presage line. 50 meters water resistance and the 23 joule 4R35 movement. So 2,000 points is nothing and about half the price. So I duly jumped online and tried to buy one. Wouldn't take my credit card details. However, I had enough points to get this one outright free of charge. So that's what I did. Free Seiko! So if you watched my review of JP's OG Sarbo 65, I compared the strap to a cheap pair of women's shoes. It seems that they have made some improvements. This one seems a little bit softer, a little bit more flexible. However, I don't think I'm ever gonna put it on my wrist. Certainly not upside down backwards. I'm not sure what the fascination Seiko have with putting on straps back to front, but it's easily remedied by putting it on my trusty Collareb Spoleto, the strap that launched a thousand watches. Makes everything look like a million bucks, so a watch that already looks like a million bucks, I'd imagine this one makes it look like two million bucks, let's get it on wrist. And there it is, on my seven inch wrist, on the Collareb Spoleto. Maybe that is a little too much, maybe I will be looking to pick up something without that kind of distressed look, but in a brown tone to complement the blue of the dial but it is a honey. This one, as noted in the review, is all about the dial. Not a bad looking piece. So there we are then, two crackers, both of which add something different to my collection. I don't have an unashamedly retro chrono that I have now picked up in the Stratton Special, and I didn't have a kind of out and out dress piece with no loom, something a little bit glitzy, something a little bit glamorous, which I have now picked up in the Seiko Presage cocktail time. A day without a parcel to me is like a day without sunshine, and it's been a very sunny day here in Sydney with these two new boys joining the collection. So there you have it, just a quick vid today, confessing my sins and introducing two new pieces to the collection. How could I resist the Stratton Special? Unashamedly retro, and I'm really looking forward to living with one of those Value 7750s long term, wobble and all. And the Seiko Cocktail Time, I've been getting closer and closer and closer to adding one of these to my personal collection. Let's see how long this one lasts. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video where I promise not to have spent more money on watches.